Hi, this is Me Before Our Mom, the podcast that helps moms stay connected to themselves while doing the most important job they'll ever have. And I'm your host, Bert Anderson. Hey guys, it's Bert, and you are listening to Me Before Mom. Today I want to talk about, um, I like to say, call them mean girl moms. Um, just a little callback to, you know, Lindsay Lohan's Mean Girls, which is an incredibly wonderful movie. And if you have not seen it yet, you're missing out. So you should go and watch it. But I wanted to talk about toxic friends. Um, I have obviously in my life, as I'm sure most of you have, I've had quite a few relationships that when I look back on them, they were toxic. And I had never heard about what a toxic relationship was or a toxic friendship was until recently. So I kind of wanted to dive into that because my main, one of my main tenets in life is that everybody wants to feel like they belong and feel like they have a friend. And when you become a mom, life dramatically changes, especially if you are the first person in your friend group to have kids, you know, suddenly all the freedom that you used to have is no longer there and you have to constantly be, you know, thinking about your kids and where they need to be and and they, you know, their schedule and their needs take precedence over your social life, to be honest. Let's just be honest. That is exactly what happens. And so a lot of times I feel like we make friends with people and it can either be that you've met them in a play group or some type of a mom's group. You know, if you are a working mom, you know, hopefully those friendships are able to last a little longer because, you know, you kind of are both in the same working environment. Um, but it's kind of this struggle of, of finding a new friend, and I think sometimes we can get lost in that process. And the fear of losing a friend becomes, you know, the reason why you stay, in all honesty. And I've talked about this in other seasons. I think it was season one. Um, I talked about why I don't like the term best friend. And I still don't like it and I feel like it puts unrealistic expectations onto a friendship Um, and oftentimes that friendship can't withstand the pressures of being your one and only absolute best friend especially like you know whatever they portray in like a movie or a TV show that's not real life Um, so If you are driving your car right now, don't get a pen or or a piece of paper. Just wait. But if you are not driving a car, I want you to get a piece of paper and some type of writing utensil. And I want you to make little check marks if you identify with the statements that I am going to ask you. So, and I will list these ref- uh, these references and resources in the show notes. So, are you guys ready? I, I've given you more than enough time to get your piece of paper and your you, writing utensil. So, here we go. Okay, so here are 15 friendship signs if somebody is really your friend. Number one, they only call when they want something. Number two, the conversation is never equal. Three, they put you down or make fun of you in front of others, which I hope is not the case because we're adults and we shouldn't be doing that. But anyways, I I digress. Four, you feel bad about yourself when you've spent time with them. Five, they are aggressively competitive. And we'll go back over this too because I want to talk about some of these things 
Um, number six, they aren't happy for you when good things happen. They bring drama into your life. They uh, complain about you behind your back. Your relationship feels like it's built on conditionality. Now we're on number 10. Your friend bail, bails on you. Um, 11, they use your secrets against you and share them. They are a bad, I number 12, is they are a bad influence and make you do things that get you into trouble, which, again, we're adults. <laughs> so I don't think that this is the case. 13, they talk about their other friends behind their backs. 14, they bail when you need them the most. And finally, 15, they exclude you from things with mutual friends. So some of these questions are more for like a younger crowd. But I feel like at, at heart, we're all kind of young. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like sometimes we never actually leave high school and we're all kind of still putting ourselves into different categories. But so look at look at the check marks that you've had. And I think, and I don't have like any like definitive, I'm not an expert in this. So I don't have any answer for you. Like if you've answered five of these as yes, then you're in a toxic relationship. I don't know. I think you have to, I think you have to assess each circumstance and each situation individually um, because life happens. You know, so the first one, the first statement I read to you was that they only call when they want something. I 100% had a friend, we are no longer friends, who constantly called me to watch her child. But she didn't come right out and say, oh, I want you to, you know, can you watch so-and-so? She would pose it under the guise of, oh, my... My child wants to play with your kids. And so I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. So she, you know, they'd bring the kid over, and the kid would end up being at my house, like, all day long, <laughs> you know, while, you know, the parents were doing something else. Um, and that's fine if it happens, if there's a give and take in the relationship, if you know that you can rely on a friend to take care of your kids or to help you out if you're in a bind and you know and they know that you will do the same, that's totally different. The problem was in this friendship is that I was the only person who was asking for help. <laughs> and it, it soon became apparent that the only time I was called – was when they needed something. And that just makes you feel really gross. I read something recently about toxic friendships and it said something like you know, if you if if you are afraid to check your phone because you are afraid of the text messages you might receive or you know, somebody calling you, chances are that relationship is not a good relationship for you to be in. Because our friends should bring out the best in us, and they should make us feel good. And life is way too short to waste it on relationships that are bad for us. You're a mom. You have a ton of other things that you are trying to do. You have a lot of stuff on your plate that you're juggling. You know, trying to deal with a bad friendship one where you feel like you're constantly being used is not worth it in the end, in the long run. It just isn't.
Okay, so number two was the conversation is never equal. Um, this was the same friend who would always only call me when they wanted something. Um, it was the same thing. Like, rarely would talk to me about my stuff. And whenever we would talk, the conversation was very turned towards her, her life, what was going on with her kids, you know, her job or lack thereof. Um, and every once in a while, you know, I mean, I think there's some manners that go along with this where somebody will be like, oh, how are you doing? And they, it, but it's more like a courtesy, how are you doing? Then I really do genuinely want to know how you're doing. Um, and so that just never, it just never felt, it just didn't feel even. And, you know, it's one thing if somebody is going through a really difficult time and they need you to to be kind of their rock and you're kind of their safe place. Um, but, you know, you know your friends. And you know that, you know, if, you're, if your girlfriend is having a really hard time and you are like her safe spot and she is kind of is not able to focus on anything other than what is right in front of her, but she hasn't shown this behavior in the past, obviously that's not a toxic friendship. They're just going through a really rough time. Um, and I feel like at the heart of this is whether it, it's really how you feel like valued as a person and how the friend values you. So if you... If, if they care about you the way you care about them, you know, they're going to feel bad that they're not asking you about your life. I, one of my very good friends was going through a divorce and we talked about her um, divorce a lot, but she would always like apologize and be like, I'm so sorry. Like, how are you doing? Like, we should talk about you. And I was like, honestly, like, I'm really fine especially compared to you, like, I'm, you know, stuff is status quo with me, um, but she still cared enough to say, I'm sorry, and, you know, what's happening with you. Um, okay, so number three, I am not going through all 15, just so you guys know. So don't like be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to listen to 15 of these. No, I'm not because not all of these, a lot of these are like, kind of no brainers. But um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was that you feel bad about yourself, which is not number three. But you feel bad about yourself when you've spent time with them. So this can be like, this can refer to, you know, maybe you are starting, like, developing a bad habit when you're around them. Um, I have had friendships where it's become clear that the friendship was based on conflict or drama involving somebody else. So it's almost like, like a mutual bond was made between myself and another person because we had a mutual friend and something was happening with that mutual friend. And so us, who were not connected before, suddenly came together. And we were, we, you know, we became close because we had kind of this problem that we were dealing with. Gosh, I'm making myself sound like I have really immature friends, guys. But you know what? Here's the thing. I'm almost 40 years old, so I've been alive for a very long time. So that's why all of my friends are not that bad. <laughs> I guess you could say I um, have been a pushover for a long time in my life. And it's taken me to be almost 40 years old to get to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to be a pushover anymore. You can't talk to me this way. Um, so if you are listening to this and you are younger than I am, I am saying this because I want you to not go through the drama that I've had to go through. Um, but anyways, so, you know, you can feel, you can feel bad about you. You feel bad about yourself when you hang out with them. Maybe you gossip way too much. Maybe you find that you're drinking 
too much, more than what you are comfortable with. I think whatever, I think you need to trust your feelings and your gut. You know, it's it's hard to, it, it's hard to like analyze behavior, especially your own behavior, especially when you're in the moment. But you can, it's very easy to understand how you're feeling and how, what your emotions are. Um, and a friend should make you feel good and empowered, empowered and uplifted. They should bring out the best in you. If you leave spending time with them, if you leave them and you feel like crap whenever you, you know, depart from each other, it's probably time to reevaluate the benefit of the friendship that you have. And it, and it doesn't mean that that person is a bad person. It could just be the combination of you two is bad together. But you should not, you know, you should feel better after you leave someone. Um, it's interesting when I was reading through these questions or these statements, I should say, um, one of them, one of the statements is they are aggressively competitive. And I think this is hard to see, but when you're a parent, it becomes a little easier because suddenly you're not competing against your, you know, you're not talking about yourself. It's about your kids and how good your kids are. And we kind of live vicariously through our children. You know, it's, it's a good thing to kind of, you know, have a healthy dynamic of being competitive with people. Like I go to the gym all the time. You guys know that I go to the gym. It's good when I'm at the gym and I am lifting with someone. There's another gal in the class who is younger than me and we are about the same as far as how much we can lift. And it's really, it's really nice to be partnered with her because we push each other because it's like, she can do one thing and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to try that. I think I can do that. Um, but if I don't lift as heavy as she does, I'm still happy for her that she can do it. You know, when you have when you have a friendship that is too competitive, one of the telltale, telltale signs is that they are not happy for you when good things happen. Or they're not happy when good things happen to your kids. You know, your friends, again, it's this thought of, you know, a friend wants you to feel empowered and they want to uplift you. Um, they don't want to tear you down. That's not their motive. But one of the things I think, and, you know, moms, like, let's be honest, it's fun. Gossiping is fun. I mean, there's a whole industry in pop culture based on gossip. Um, and but one thing that, like, I, my mom used to always tell me is that if somebody is talking bad about their friends, especially people they call their good friends, if they are gossiping about them to you, chances are they are talking about you behind your back. Which is really hard to kind of come to terms with because it just feels yucky, especially if you, you know, I think if you realize that you have this friendship that is, um, that is based on around drama and is based on, you know, kind of talking about people or complaining to each other. You have you have to assume that if somebody is talking bad about one somebody else that they call their friend, they are most likely 
also talking about you to their friends because it goes both ways. Um, it, it's fine. Obviously, it's fine if you have, because you have those friendships that, you know, there's trust and there's a give and take to it. And so you do have friendships where you can rely on the person to hold in confidence and allow you to kind of complain and, you know, vent to another person. But if that's the only thing that the relationship is based on, it suddenly becomes not a good thing at all. It's, I will be honest, guys, it is a little difficult to talk to you about these things and not make it obvious the situations that I have experienced in my own life in case those people happen to be listening. <laughs> so if I seem a little, like, vague, it's because I'm trying to make it not obvious who I'm talking about. Um, so the last, the last statement that I read... And I think that this is really important, especially in today's um, today's social media world, is um, they exclude you from things with mutual friends. It is not a bad thing to have more than one friend. I tell my kids this all the time. Consequently, you, I have to be okay and you have to be okay with your quote-unquote best friend, being friends with other people and and doing things without including you. And it really sucks <laughs> when that happens, especially um, if you're like me and you just have this fear of missing out. Um, but it is okay to have other friends. Where it gets tricky is when that friendship is like it gets tricky when the friendship is flaunted or the event is flaunted over social media. I know we've talked about this before and we've talked about how, you know, on social media you're only seeing people's highlight reels. And that's true. You are. You are only seeing people's highlight reels. You are only seeing what they are putting out there that is their best life. I found out recently about um, an acquaintance who's getting a divorce, and I was completely shocked because on Instagram, they seem so happy together. But so often we're putting out into the world what we want our life to be and how we want it to feel. A good test of this, especially as you get older, is to look back at your old, well, they used to call them status updates on Facebook. Now it's not, I don't think it's a status update. I don't even think Facebook writes, you know, Facebook used to do this thing where you would type in, like, it would be like, Bert feels like, and then I would finish the sentence, you would, like, fill in the sentence. In the very beginning of Facebook, you know, that was one of the things that you did. But now that's not there anymore, but we still feel I think sometimes we still like to show our best sides and show that we are liked. The longer the longer that I am alive and the older I become, the more I am realizing how bad social media can be because I wonder if before we had social media, if women especially felt as lonely and left out as they do now. Because before it was just, you know, you kind of guessed. Now it's plastered all over Snapchat, Instagram, um, Facebook. You can see in real time, like, oh, they're doing this, and I wasn't invited. And it's okay if it happens every once in a while, because obviously you're going to do the same thing. Maybe you'll hang out with a mutual friend that you and your quote-unquote BFF have um, together, and, and you guys have decided to, you know, just do something, just the two of you, and not include the mutual friend that you have. But if you see 
that it's developing a pattern and it's happening over and over again, it's time to, I think, be done. Life is too short, and moms, we have so little time, especially, I mean, at any at any age of motherhood, you have, like, we have hardly any time, because if you are a young mom with young children, you are, you know, in physical demand, because you have to help your child survive, and live, and eat, and you know, sleep and do all those things. You have to, you, it's a very physically demanding job. And then when they get older, it becomes emotionally demanding. Um, and I find myself now when I'm talking to my kids saying often, you know, it's not worth the emotional energy, especially because my daughter is, you know, she's getting into that preteen stage, you know, the girl issues, girl friendships are kind of big, starting, which is really lovely. Maybe we'll talk about that another time. (laughs) But um, I find myself telling her all the time, like, it's not worth the emotional energy. And so, mom, like, that's what I'm saying to you. If you have a friendship, even even if they make you, like, you feel like you belong and you feel like you fit in and you have, like, somebody that you can go to and do things with frequently, and it's convenient. If it makes you feel like you are emotionally exhausted or drained after spending time with them, it's time to be done. You don't have to have a, you know, clear break, clear cut breakup like I'm breaking up with you. You know, you can kind of like just let things fade out. You know, just start to distance yourself from them. Um, If that doesn't work, maybe it's time to talk about it. But again, you have to evaluate the emotional energy that's going to go into that confrontation. Is it worth it or is it not? And I, I don't know. I don't like confrontation. I don't know anybody who really does. Sometimes, especially if it's a bad relationship and you're already feeling emotionally worn out, it's not worth the confrontation and the energy that you have to expel to confront somebody on how they've been making you feel. So I wish this was a lighter topic. (laughs) I do. But friendships are really important, and life is really short. And, you know, everybody wants to have a friend. Every single person wants to have a friend. And when you are a mom, you need friends because motherhood can feel very isolating. And you can just, you can feel very isolated. Even even if you belong to an active online community, you cannot replace face-to-face, real life, even talking on the phone, relationships. You just can't. You can't. You can't fake those. So let me know, you know, let, let me know if you guys have had experience with toxic friendships. Let me know if you know, you feel like like you're in one and you don't know what to do. Um, let's get a dialogue going about this. Um, so you can, we'll put all of my social media handles in the notes and you can reach out to me and let me know what you, what you think. Um, but life is just too short. And I think after going through the pandemic, one thing I took away from it was that there's we do not have any control over what's going to happen. And so the things I can control, such as how I react to things and people, I need to start investing in those things and paying attention to them now. And all during this process, especially because I can be incredibly hard on myself, and I'm sure you can too, I have to learn to give myself grace and be kind to yourself. Always 
be kind. Now it's time for what's Bert watching, but we changed it to listening to <laughs> because I love podcasts and this is a podcast and Sarah likes podcasts too. So we're going to talk about audio dramas. Yay. Welcome. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. Yes, you should be excited. I have so many. I don't know if I can whittle it down to three, but I will do my best. I have some, well, I honestly listen to like comedy bang bang, like nonstop. So I don't know how cool I'll be with this one, but let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, gosh, I have so many. Okay. So audio. So I, let's do audio dramas because for a while, um, I was all into true crime and then I got a little depressed and paranoid. Um, and so then I discovered a little known podcast called Tannis. And it's very good. And it's very sci fi. Um, it is from the Pacific North. Um, let's see. It's from it's it's so hard to explain. It's from the Pacific Radio Alliance. Mm hmm. Let's see. The, I've never heard I, of that, I'm but I do like the sound of it. It's it's I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the Cliff Notes version to explain to you what it's about because it is a little so it's a serialized bi weekly podcast. Um it's an ex so it's about um it's an exploration of the nature of truth, conspiracy, and information. Tannis Ooh. is what happens when the lines of science and fiction start to blur. Mm-hmm. Tannis is real. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. It's super good. I am not doing it justice. Um, but basically what it is is Tannis is a game, kind of. Um, and there's, like, kind of sort of secret um there's like a myth tannis is a myth um and i think there's like different portals to the world and it all takes place in washington state in the woods cool yeah and cool. so it's narrated by um this guy named nick silver and he is looking for um tannis and trying to figure out what it's all about and there is a uh, Mere Catnip is his, like, secretive cyber information specialist. That's what she calls herself because she doesn't like to call herself a hacker. Um, and so, yeah. So, it's very good. I highly recommend it. There's six. I, want, I like, very much want to listen to You this. should. I'm putting this on my list. It's very good. You totally should because it's super good. I actually think I'm going to listen to it again. Is it T-A-N-I-S? Yep, T-A-N-I-S. I don't really like that word. Could they call it something else? I don't Thank think you. they could. I don't know why they can't. <sighs> so. <laughs> so that is number one. The next one is, oh, it was so good. It's um, another sci-fi. Um. And it's from, it's called The Bright Sessions. It's a science fiction podcast that follows a group of therapy Ooh. patients. Yes, but they're not your typical therapy patients because each has a unique supernatural ability. And the show documents their struggles and discoveries as well as the motivations of their mysterious therapist, Dr. Bright. So kind of think of, um, it kind of reminded me of Heroes. 
Do you remember the show Heroes on NBC? Yes. Yeah. That reminds me of like eight sci-fi things at once. <laughs> That's like the most sci-fi basis of the story that's possible. Yes. It's really, it's really, really good though. I really love it. Um, so, cause there, there are some that are like, um, there's one, there's one person on there who's an empath. Um, and it's like, it's set in this world where people have abilities, but like, I think they're not supposed to have abilities. It's been a while since I've listened to it, but it's by Lauren Shippen. I like to Shippen. pretend that that's me in this reality. Is that normal? Um, yes. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's super good. So Lauren Shippen is a brilliant writer um, and creator. And so this was like the first thing that she did, the Bright Sessions. Um, cool. And so now she's gone on to do a bunch of other things. Um so definitely check that out. Super good. Um, my other one that I love, I love. It's called Edict Zero FIS. That is a sci-fi name. It That's is. That's a very sci-fi name. That sounds like what Grimes would name her child. <laughs> she probably would if she had another one. Um, okay, so Edict Zero 100% is a sci-fi story. Kind of think of it as the Matrix a little bit. But not as Matrixy. I don't know. I There's something it. about it's it's very it 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 took me a while to understand it because there are a ton of different characters. I think they're into season what now? Um 5. I discovered it during COVID like when we were locked down and it was so good, so good, so good, so good. And the, the um, sound editing is amazing. It's like, it makes you feel like it's immersive audio. Ooh. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, it's kind of cyberpunk um, and it's like science fiction and law enforcement, crime, Oh my suspense. God, what's it called again? Sorry. <laughs> Edict. Zero F I S. What is edict? How do you spell edict? E E D I C T. And then okay, zero. That is some nonsense. Okay. Mm hmm. F I S. But cool. this is what I'm they say. So they say themselves, they said, listeners have made comparisons to Blade Runner, The X Files, Fringe, Lex, The Prisoner, Twin Peaks, Millennium, The Matrix, Tron. And a diversity of other shows. Oh my god, those are all my favorite things. <coughs> those are all my favorite things. Okay. It, yeah, it's it's really good. So, um, and because like, um, you'll you'll be able to just go, like, you know, binge it all, and you won't be caught up. Like I'm caught up now, and I have to wait. Oh. Oh my god, this is great. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing this with me. You're welcome. I hope everybody loves it. I'm I, very excited. And I could do even more of these. I kind of want you to. Yep. Um, maybe. We'll I mean, I later. listen to comedy bang, 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 which is like fart and dick jokes, and I laugh really hard. But <laughs> I, um, I just like comedians, and I like to learn about new comedians. So I listen to that one a lot. I don't listen to that kind of stuff. I like to immerse myself into a story. I I can't handle it all the time. I get like overly stimulated and I don't know like where my body is and I start um, like freaking out. I can understand that. I get that. That makes a lot think, of sense. I think it's because I'm alone all the time because I don't have children or a husband. So you know that that's... becomes my reality and then I'm like not okay with that. I can understand that. I 100% see your point. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Honorable mentions since you like comedy and then we'll be done guys. But um, there's another one called Wolf 359 and it's um, another okay, sci-fi one, one, but it's about this. Um, it's a, it's about this group of um, people who are on a ship discovering new moons and um 
it's basically they kind of are all like a mismatched group of people, but you get to know them really well. And it's the one of the main characters is this guy who's the communication specialist. And each episode starts out with him kind of doing like a radio bro- broadcast because he's so bored and he doesn't know who's listening to any of the things that he's saying. Oh my God, um, I love that. Yes, and it's it's hilarious. You fall in love with the characters. Like when it was over and it was the last, when it, I listened to the last <laughs> episode, I was sad that it was done. Interesting. So... Wolf 359. Okay, well, I can't listen to all of those, so I think I choose Edict 0 FIS. Is that the right choice? Uh, yes. Okay. Because I'm, I'm like, wanting to start getting to doing more sound design stuff for podcasts. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. So I think that will be, like, a good route for my brain yes. to go. Yes, that will be, for sure. Cool. I'm excited. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. This is great for Yay. me. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope everybody else loves it, too. I think they will. Okay, bye. Bye. And that is a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening. And in case you were wondering, Me Before Mom is hosted by me, Bert Anderson. And it is produced by the lovely and talented Sarah abdel All. You can also check out Matriarch DM for all of the show notes as well as other amazing podcasts for women, by women. And don't forget to check out my own website, BertMAnderson.com, so you can see what's going on in my world. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you guys next time.